Well, hello there, everybody. My name is Owing Zero, and welcome to the first of possibly many YouTube help videos. This one is going to be focusing mainly on thumbnails. Now, the thing about thumbnails is that they're very important, and it's a very small feature of YouTube that a lot of people overlook. If you watch a lot of YouTube videos, you've obviously seen a thumbnail. It's the first thing you see before you click on a video. It's that little preview that just says, hey, here's a thing, and it's a picture. Now, believe it or not, thumbnails are actually very important. While, of course, you can have a good thumbnail and a crappy video is beside the point, the thumbnail is actually almost just as important as the video itself. Because a thumbnail is what is going to get people to click on your videos to then watch the videos. So you can have the best content in the world, but if you don't have a good thumbnail and people don't click on the thumbnail, they're not going to see any of the content that you've created, whether it's good or it's bad. So it's really important that you have good thumbnails, or at least acceptable thumbnails. You don't have to have the best thumbnails in the world because thumbnails are all relative to opinions and people's aesthetic and what people like and don't like and my th thumbnails are all over the place so that's completely beside the point I don't even know what thumbnail I'm gonna have for this video I haven't even thought about it until just now and now I'm kinda panicking anyway so let's go over a few different types of thumbnails before we get into anything actually related to the thumbnail itself in the construction of the thumbnail first off you have to figure out what kind of content you are creating if you're creating sketch comedy having a thumbnail is actually really easy um, if you have a decent quality camera and you're making the sketch comedy, it's pretty easy to get a thumbnail, just a single frame of something happening in the sketch comedy that is going on that is relative to the story. For example, if you ever have watched Tomska or any of his videos, and you look at any of his sketch comedy videos, and you look at some of the thumbnails, they're all more or less scenes from the sketch itself that are related to the title or the subject of the video itself. For example, Sniper Pug. There's a sniper rifle and a pug sitting next to it. Pretty self-explanatory. You have literal drinks. There's Tom. He's screaming and holding a drink. That's a uh, Bloody Mary, actually, now that I look at it. Kind of like screaming Bloody Mary. It's part of the humor. And there's, you know, Picture Perfect featuring Crab Sticks. Well, Crab Sticks is in the frame and holding a picture of a cat. What's gonna happen? I don't know. It's, let's, let's figure it out. So, again, sketch comedy, if that's the kind of video you're going for, it's relatively easy to get a thumbnail for it. Now, something such as gaming, it, that's where things get a little more complicated. If you're doing a gaming video, there is literally millions and millions and millions of different ways to make a thumbnail. For example, uh, a lot of popular YouTubers such as Jacksepticeye, PewDiePie, Markiplier, they all have a very... not a distinct way of doing their thumbnails, but it's sort of a trend happening amongst popular YouTubers is them either putting them their face on something in the game or something relative to the game. Um, for example, there's a picture right here of Slitherio. It's a frame from the game Slitherio and then Mark's face on the end of what I am praying to God is a snake. <laughs> and there's one for Enter the Gungeon. It's his face and it's a guy holding a gun and a meme, you know, because all he talks about is memes in that video. There's store clerk, uh, bleh, sorry, I can't talk now. Store clerk blues from the job simulator using the Vive. Well, it's a picture of him wearing the Vive and a store clerk. Pretty self-explanatory. Then there's things such as series of videos. If you look at Mario Maker. You see Mario, and you see an enemy behind it. This is the way 90% of his Mario Maker videos are. It's Mario holding the block that has the number of the video it is. For example, this one's 29. And something related 
behind it that's happening in the video. That's an uh, enemy that pops up frequently in that video. Or sometimes it's just a random enemy or a random picture. It really depends on the video. Uh, Factorio gameplay number five is serious brain power. So he just used a picture of a bunch of brains and one of them's glowing. Uh, back to series, Honeycam Studio, 90% of his videos, or his thumbnails for these series, is the number at the top, Honeycam Studio, the logo, that never changes. He just changes the number, and then a picture of one of the girls from the game off to the left, being the main subject. Uh, things like Portal 2, you know, it's a picture of Portal and then something going on in the background. But it's not a stock image of the game Portal. Yes, it's a relatively basic image. It doesn't have his mark on it. It doesn't have an episode number. It doesn't have a lot going on, but it's Portal. There's the two people from Portal 2. It's a co-op episode. You kind of get the gist of it. If you don't know what Portal 2 is, you've probably been living under a rock, but you know, hey, that's Portal 2. You get the idea. Um, his Water War Challenge. Again, it's a frame from the video. Pretty easy to get something when it's like a live action video, whether it's sketch comedy or challenge videos, vlogs, things like that. There are a lot of styles of thumbnails. Just, there's one thing that if you are playing a game, do not ever do. Do not ever Google the image of... Google an image. That sounds weird now that I say it. Do not ever Google a image of a video game and take a stock image of that video game and then use it as your thumbnail that it, it's it looks really unprofessional it looks really crappy it looks really cheap it looks like you just got in and got out you didn't care and again thumbnails are going to be the first impression you make to any viewer any potential viewer if they see just a really basic thumbnail and they're like eh, it's another you know Dark Souls 2 video whatever um, I, I made a Dark Souls video a really, 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 really long time ago, and I'll probably bring the picture up on screen at some point. Um, uh, here it is. Pray to God I remember to edit that in. It's my face over character from Dark Souls. It says Dark Souls on it. It's not a stock image. I put some effort into it. Even if you just take an image and say, hey, here's my logo on top of it. That's fine. It's something happening. It's not just a stock image. It's There's something there. There's some kind of content. You put some effort into it. The only person I've ever seen on YouTube ever get away with not caring what the F happens to their thumbnails and not even uploading one is Critical. He, he doesn't do any custom thumbnails for any of his videos. Shut up, Andrew. Yeah, I'm, I'm not asking. Nobody's asking you. Nobody's asking you. He's the only one that I have ever seen continuously do it, and nobody really give a crap because it's critical. You, he, that's just not having a thumbnail. It's kind of just fits his personality, really. If you don't know who Critical is, don't worry about it. It's okay. Now, something I wanted to talk about is uh, the third style that I'm going to talk about here is a style that Clue actually uses, or Grim Fox. And it's it's unique. It's different. There's a lot happening, but it's actually very simple. There's nine times out of ten. Actually, this screenshot I have all of these she is in. But she's in the basically the main focus of it. There's words off to one side or the other where it is either relative to the title or is the title or relative to the subject of the video itself and then in the background there's something happening that's somewhat relative to the video itself such as if you look at kiwi strawberry it's her holding a box that i'm assuming the g fuel came in it says g fuel taste test and then in the background strawberry kiwi it's in a way a form of subliminal messaging like you see it but you don't necessarily notice and you don't have to focus on it to get the point of it it's a picture of her covering up her eye, bleach in my eye. It's a story about when she got bleach in her eye. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's self-explanatory and it's eye-catching because it's bright, it's vibrant, and things are happening. 
It's not white text over a black background. You know, there's something happening. And, or there's the I Am Alive, which is um, a gameplay video. It's her on top of a guy who looks like he's scavenging for things, which is the point of I Am Alive, if that game even has a point, but I'm not here to talk about that today. There, There's effort put into these. You, If you scrolled through YouTube and you saw one of these, it'd catch your eye. It'd make you look at it. It'd be like, huh, that's interesting. They're appealing to the eye. There's things happening. There's bright colors, but there's not too much happening. That's what you want in a thumbnail. You want something that catches your eye, but not something that hurts your eye. Not something you don't want to look at. So now we're going to move back to what I have open in Photoshop here. And you don't have to use Photoshop. I want to get this out of the way real quick. You don't have to use Photoshop if you want to make a thumbnail. There are only two programs that I would personally recommend because the only two I have enough experience with that actually were good experiences if you want to edit photos on your computer which I would recommend you do because if you are recording games from your computer you have a computer to make thumbnails with obviously Photoshop since that's what I use myself or the program I used to use until I bought Photoshop which is GIMP or GIMP. It's a great program. It is a hundred percent freeware, so you don't pay for anything. It's totally legal. You're not like, oh, I have a you know illegal version of this, uh, you know, or you don't want to, you don't think you can get a good photo editing program without getting an illegal copy of it. There are, there is. I wouldn't say there's a ton of good ones, but there is GIMP. It is free totally legal it's not like a you know oh I have a pirated version of this it's a great program it's great for people that are starting out in YouTube and have little to no budget you know um, editing programs aren't something you want to spend a ton of money on and that's something I'm going to get on hopefully in a future video I just wanted to say that use either GIMP or Photoshop for your thumbnails the interfaces are different, but anything Photoshop can do, about 80% of it, that free program GIMP can do, it's just not as simplified. You have to put a little bit more work into it to get what you want. But it's still a great program, especially for beginners. Um, but anyway, into thumbnail construction. This is my thumbnail for the series Rampa that I'm currently doing with me and my brother on my streaming channel. So, if you look at it, you get a good explanation of what's happening. It's Danganronpa 2, it's the first episode, and it's character of the game. Very simple setup, not a whole lot going on, but there's actually a lot going on that you might not realize if you were just glance at this. Well, first off, let, let's break down the thumbnail. Let's say we take out Usami. That's kind of weird, you know? Th there's not a whole lot going on here. Sure, it's Danganronpa 2. Yeah, there's the first episode. Okay. Well, let, let, let's take it a step further and break it down one more time by taking away the effects of episode and the effects of the title one. Now it really looks boring. Now it really doesn't look that good. Let's say these were all just blue or these were all just black or I took away all the effects of the... Oops, I didn't mean to remove that take away the effects of the title take away this extra layer that I have here this looks like crap this is not a good thumbnail there's a lot going on here first off let's break it down into the little parts and I will tell you bit by bit this is already looking better where's this one there we go okay we're sort of back to where we were. So, the things that make good thumbnails is, for one, let's say the Danganronpa logo. You don't want it too big. You don't want it taking up half of the thumbnail. You want it right about there. It's good proportion, it's easy to see, and whenever you make a thumbnail, 
really big piece of advice. Zoom out, make it about the size, more or less, of what you would see when you're scrolling. Because you have to think, you know, sure, if you're looking at it like full size like this, yeah, those that episode one, it's a little big, but, I don't know what I just did there, I didn't mean to duplicate that. When you scroll down to this side, this size, it's easy to read. It's easy to see EP1. It's not small, you don't have to like lean in closer to see what it is. It's very simple. Now, obviously, if you just had a color behind it, it's it's kind of boring. Even if you put uh, Usami back in there, it, it's still kind of boring. Little details like this are really often overlooked is that the background, even though you're going to be seeing it this small, take away the background, it's still important. There's still, it still looks very weird. Put that in there, it makes things look a little bit better. It, you have to just, I've learned this from probably four years of making thumbnails, is that you cannot take any part of the thumbnail and think that it's a small part. Everything is equally important. Whether it be the foreground, the background, the little pieces off to the side, everything's going to be important in the thumbnail. So, if you're doing a very long series, like Danganronpa is a really long visual novel slash detective mystery game. If you're doing a series like this, you want a base. Like, if I take away Usami, this is my base. When I make the next episode, I'm going to take away Isami, and I'm going to put Miyota there. Now, I might use a different color for Miyota. I haven't decided. I might make hers blue. But the next episode, well, and then I'm going to change this to EP2. And then the next episode, I'm going to put Kameda there. He's green. You know, it's, it's a little bit different that one is going to be changed to a two. I can't do that. Yeah, I can. It's still a text. So like this, you know, it's going to be episode, please load in, it's not wanting to, hold on, there we go, episode three, you know, whoops, excuse me, there we go, episode three, I might make that three a little bit smaller because with this font it's really wide, but, oh, 33, that's this, should be 33. There we go. But, you know, you just you play around with it a little bit. Make that just a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. You don't want to make it too much smaller. And right there, there's another thumbnail. It's easy things like this. If you're going to have a really long series, you want them to stay, for the most part, relatively similar. But you don't want them to be the same exact thumbnail. Live streams are a different story. Because if you're watching a live stream, you know, the thumbnail is not necessarily as important. If it's the same thumbnail over and over and over again, that's okay because it makes it easily... I can't think of the word right now. But you see it and you think, oh yeah, that guy's streaming. A big part, I actually don't have one of these up for demonstration, so I will open one of these really quickly. Um, let's see, one of the things a lot of people don't do is if you're doing a live stream, you want a thumb, you want your thumbnail to have the something that says, hey, I am live and I'm streaming, you know, things are happening. Like, I will open up my Stardew Valley right here. I have, the, I built this little thing that... It's just a simple little overlay. And it just... It's just live. It... You know... When I'm not live, I'll take all that away. I'll take the live. I'll take the record button. And it'll be that when it's just uploaded to YouTube. But when people see this, they say, Oh, hey, he's live. You know? It's just... It's another thing to catch people's eye so that people know what's happening. This one... Yes, it's live, but I'm doing my streams a little bit differently. I'm not going to really get into that right now, so I'll leave that up for now. But here's another style of thumbnails. 
Now this is one, it's probably one of my favorites, because white and blue is one of my favorite color combinations. But it's, again, really simple to make. It looks really nice, it's really eye-catching. Grow home, you get the concept, you get what's happening, you see images of the gameplay, it catches your eye. Bright colors, but not too much going on. All I did for this one was take two screenshots of the game while I was playing it. Cut corners off of them, you know, angled them a weird way because if you angle things a weird way and cut them off in different places, it gives it, uh, it can, if you do it correctly, it can give it a really nice look. And then put the title up there, put a blue border around it, put a white background behind both the things, boom, you have a thumbnail. White and blue complement each other. Remember that a lot. It, it will help you. Um, not black and white. Y you don't want too much. You don't want to. You don't necessarily want an even balance of black and white in your um, thumbnails. They can look a little bit weird when you do that. So let's go over to this one for an old series that I had for another type of thumbnails for an old Life is Strange series I was doing. And if you notice that the title is there, it's easily readable from a distance. You can obviously see what number of episode this is. It's episode 5. And it's mixed in something is happening on screen. In this one, the title of the game is not the foreground. All I did, if you look at this, is, like, let's say if I just single out that one layer you'll get a better understanding Like these layers these are all things that go in front of the thumbnail or I'm sorry not the thumbnail the title so if I were to take these layers away and put this back it looks a little bit messy the, yes the titles big it's easy to read but it's kinda covering up the for what I would want to be the foreground so I copied this section, made a layer of it, foreground's there, things are happening. There's your episode number right there. I really like this style of thumbnail for another series. So if you're making a series, instead of doing something like this, where everything's the same and minor changes, you keep the title the same, you keep the number the same color, and something happening within the episode is the focus. Like this, Chloe and Max were being confronted by Chloe's father, and so, or stepfather, and, you know, something's happening here. You're going to be like, ooh, who's that? You know, if you haven't seen the game, you're like, who's that guy? They're together. What's going on? You know, it piques your interest because something is happening. So, if you look at the other Life is Strange thumbnails I did. I'll put those up on screen right here. Something is happening in each scene. It's a main focus of that episode of what's happening. These take a lot more work, but they come out looking a lot better, in my opinion. Again, all of these, my own opinion, but hopefully you can take something from one of these. And this is another thing from an old series I did from another channel. Um, I would have just taken the icon away, but I don't have the PSD image of this. Um, but this is for Dead Space. So, Dead Space 2, again, something's happening on screen. Now, I didn't, you know, mix the foreground and background of this one, because I actually hadn't started doing that at this point, but I had gotten to the point where I wanted a s scene from each episode being a main focus of that episode as the thumbnail, with the title, the episode number, everything's blue and glowing, everything matches, it's great. These kind of thumbnails, they get a little bit more work because you have to find the scene you want, you have to find the frame you want, extract that frame and then build the thumbnail from it. It does take a lot more work, but it comes out looking a lot better. So, you know, for series you have minor changes, stays the same, or a lot of changes, some things stay the same. Or just whatever you come up with. The point I'm trying to get across is hopefully one of these might inspire you to come up with a good thumbnail, or 
you'll learn something from this, and you can come up and create your own thumbnails, your own style. You know, for my live streams, a lot of the times I try to incorporate that, you know, green and pink into there because that's how my channel art's color is, and I really like that color scheme for some reason. But you know, people look at the thumbnail and they'll be like, oh, there's that, you know, green and pink, you know, everywhere. Hey, that's, you know, awing zero, or, you know, something. Come up with your own style. If you like, let's say, you want to make all of your videos have that background. And you put the title, you put a character, and you put an episode name of something else, then that's your thing. Or if you do a series of editorials or a series of top tens. You know, a lot of people like Brutal Moost, Peanut Butter Gamer. Did I just say Brutal Moost? I can't. I don't know if I said Brutal Moose or Brutal Moost, but either way, um, they all have like a theme. Cat Icarus, He has a base for every single one of his thumbnails, and then something related to the game in one of the corners. You know, you can do thumbnails that way too. There is no limit to how you can do thumbnails and it seems really intimidating to a lot of new people so that's why a lot of people really play it safe when it comes to thumbnails or they don't try really hard or they use a stock image or they think well thumbnails aren't that important. They really are. People just don't realize how important they are. So, don't overlook your thumbnails. Make sure your thumbnails look good, uniform, and easily seeable from, you know, dis you know, zoom it out before you upload it. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't know how to say that and make it sound nice with words, but make sure you can see it when it's small. You know, don't over clutter it, don't have too much going on because you can't fit the meaning of a video in a thumbnail entirely. You want to get just a little bit of it to where people click on the video. Um, or you could go clickbaity with everything and put boobs in every single one of your thumbnails. You know, I'm not here to judge, do whatever you want to do. But don't overlook the thumbnails. It's something that a lot of people don't realize is as important as it is. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully maybe you can come up with your own style. Hopefully you learned a little bit of tricks. And also, uh, some people might ask why I didn't explain how I did some of the things that I did. I want this to be a general series of videos not specific to just Photoshop itself. Um, this is more of an ideas. Like, these are things you can do with your thumbnails no matter what you use to make them. Such as, like, if I made a video making tutorial, I wouldn't go into specifics of how I set up my one specific camera or how I sped up, set up my one specific light box, you know? You want the general idea of everything. That's what these two videos are. If you want a specific Photoshop tutorial, I technically made one of those on one of my old channel, but heck, I made one of them before that too, so I can do it again if people really want a Photoshop tutorial. Um, but that's basically why I didn't go into very specific details of the editing itself. These are just ideas. These are just things you can do. Things to think about when you are making your thumbnails for your videos. And again, make thumbnails for your videos. Don't don't leave them just to where YouTube automatically selects a frame of the video and makes it the thumbnail. It it just it looks very unprofessional and it's gonna make a lot of people overlook your channel. And that is not why you want people not to watch your videos. If people don't want to watch your videos, it should be something related to the content. It shouldn't be because the thumbnail looks bad. But hey, if you have good content, then work on your thumbnails and then that's great. And then you're great. And then you're already set and then you have a million subscribers and you're doing well. Anyway, I should stop rambling now. Thank you again for watching. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, comment, tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you learned anything. 
and I will see you later. Bye-bye.